Welcome aboard Cosmonauts. My name is Cosmic Oceans. I'm back with Dream Daddy. Uh, we just finished up the barbecue. We're telling Amanda how we feel about it, and we'll see how things go. I feel like I was at a networking event, because that's literally what it was. <laughs> I'm gonna get LinkedIn notifications out of this. I just know it. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. Maybe I will if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Except for Joseph and his really creepy family. <laughs> Me too, Dad. <laughs> Drinking too much hmm. water can something. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Mm. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Mm. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not gonna do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that and I will never do that. Mm. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh, my plans were kinda to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... So long I can sleep for. Throw a party! A real rager. All the other dads in the neighborhood are invited. I'll see if I can get you a spot on the list, but honestly, it's looking tight and you might just have to wait in line. I know the guy at the door, I'll get in no problem. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. He looks like- it looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that, although I think if I were actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any real f any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just got caught that thing on- wait. Yeah. Something on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. Lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hot Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. <laughs> I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again, and then the phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a dental reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell are not only uh, assuaging my anxiety, but possibly uh, exacerbating it while <laughs> with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who she was even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me so I know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh no. Oh thank god it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Stop. Sweetie, thank god you're safe. Ugh. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of hmm. her pocket. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda, Anne. Huh? Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after you curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Huh? Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I was scared. You weren't responding and it was just- I was just like when your dad hopped to stop myself from tearing up. Oh, Dad, I didn't mean to- I sit down on the couch and I put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. 
Amanda closed the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said ke keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. Uh -huh. She eventually walks into the kitchen. Hey. Uh -huh. I thought about what you said last night. Hmm. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly didn't even think about it. Uh -huh. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well... Uh, we trust you. I also thought about it and I'll try to give you your space from here on out. I gotta trust that you can take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Team flowers? Team flowers. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in, t uh, in the time it takes me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go? Mm. What? What's dad book? Ugh. It's a social media platform? Wait. Mm. What? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Alright, I'll help you so uh, sound interesting on the internet. Aww. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which turns out is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Alright, pops. We gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On a Friday night, you are most likely to polish and sort my coin collection, Netflixing grill, baby, fall asleep watching the History Channel, torment my children with dad puns, sing into blissful oblivion, sleep. Um, uh, probably this. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? My grill. The Lost Shaker of Salt. Cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. <laughs> uh, a boat, obviously. <laughs> what are your turn-ons? Strong dad arms. Tennis shoes with long white socks. Well manicured long. Street smarts. Top tier. Comfortable with crying. Strong dad arms. What did you want to be when you grew up? President of space. <laughs> Pro skater who is also an astronaut. Uh, the president of space. What's your favorite movie genre? War documented Sean Connery's entire filmography. Anything on laser, romance, whatever will make me cry. Old comedies that haven't aged well. Uh, horror isn't a... Ugh. <clears throat> a healthy dinner. Trying to geocache but getting hopelessly <laughs> arson. <laughs> uh, being emotionally vulnerable. Uh, what do you never leave home without? A sensible car. My sick vape. <laughs> Book of words. A cool knife. My cripplingly low self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> I frequently forget my phone keys and wallet at home sometimes. Uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about how proud I am of uh, conspiracy theories, potential ends of the world, if I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill, uh, when I can get, uh, when I can next get a cup of coffee, lawn mower modifications. <laughs> Uh, it's like coffee. Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them, more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, dad. Welcome. You've got dads. I've got dads? Um, okay. Let's see. Woo. I kinda... let's message... let's look at Damien. How do you do? I have finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I'll try my best to understand. Um, I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. 
Listen to True Crime Podcast <laughs> Taxidermy, my new specimen. A coffin. Pronouncing bosom correctly. A bat. Oh, horror. It's night. I'm a mom. Mortal sin. Let's message Damien. Don't forget to floss every day. Damien seems really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see Damien typing anything. But then he keeps typing and typing. Man. Is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and the computer finally dings. Sam. Oh, whoa, there's more. <laughs> Sam, I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me as a as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Okay. Oh my god. I'd be highly <laughs> I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you till then I do. Yours humble D blood march. Stare at the screen and reread the letter several times more. Hey Amanda. Amanda pops out of her room, her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Hey, are you alright? I'm fine. Oh yeah, totally I'm cool. I just found out that the succulent I've been watering and singing to for the last three months was actually made of plastic. Even the dirt was fake. Oh, honey. So sorry about your plan. I can buy you a new one if you want a real one this hmm. time. That's sweet, but I rescued that plant and now I know it's fake. I. She cleanses her fist with determination. I'm still gonna love it no matter what. Is that what being a parent is like? Yes, sweetie. Make sure it gets into a good college. But seriously. You know you can talk to me about anything, right? Yeah. That's why I'm sharing my succulent woes with you. Okay. Just remember that it's okay to be sad. And also remember that I love you very much. And only want what's best for you. Alright, alright. Jeez, don't make me cry again. Can you help me with something? Ugh. Dad, for the last time I'm not popping your back pimples. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, can you interpret this for me? Oh. Turn to the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand net speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids go over, got over saying lol and LMAO or whatever and decided that what we needed was to bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Hmm. Where's your pen and quill? What? Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill, Dad? How will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming uh, debut ball? Okay, now you are, you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. <laughs> or our dowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're reciting things that you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like the first five pages that I read... A review of the movie still got a B though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over to me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards. Amanda hits the send and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. Oh. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house, it's more a manor, estate. The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer. Uh, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. As I'm admiring, the front door slams shut behind me. H hello 
Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Sam, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of the, a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked. I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Please, let me show you around. Okay. He seems nice, though. A little weird, but nice. Damien leads me around his house, uh, showcases his parlor sitting room, uh, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. Oh. Uh, this is one of the older rooms on the block, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Hmm. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past the door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black uh, parade poster. Did they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teen years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. We roach the door at the end of the hall. Damien opens it with a flourish. And this is the library. Ooh. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling, arched window... Uh, Arched windows, the walls are lined with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period-appropriate furniture. Damien is uh, clearly really proud of this room. <clears throat> you know, Sam, the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would uh, encourage youth into lives of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book in random and examine the worn cover, open it, and I turn to a random page and read aloud. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No. Mm, I don't even, Oh, Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Oh my god. <laughs> Who did this? What? Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> oh no. That's a rare book from my private collection. <clears throat> it's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Oh. I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pen right through my finger. Ah, uh, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? Hmm. No. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn. Did you know the Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? <laughs> no, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. <laughs> Please, will you join me for tea? Yes. I follow Damien into his sitting room where finger foods have already been set upon a beautiful ta uh, tiered silver, tr silver tray. Wow, I can speak English. Um, I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Uh. Damien smiles to himself. What? Uh. There's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they're served. Oh. Uh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Your home is really impressive. It seems like you really put a lot of work into this place. The Thank you. No one's ever complimented my home before. It's a really nice house. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place and look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Oh. Sorry? Haha. <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? Mm. I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Oh. 
Of course. But it's, you know, the song. A man made me listen to it. Seriously? <laughs> I'd love to see a marching band. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. <clears throat> What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermy animals grew into sort of an obsession. Uh, it's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Hmm. I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and I try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideas uh, would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Tell me, Sam, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing and quite honestly rather attractive. Oh. Please do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. That's... I can't. <laughs> These are all terrible. Uh, the uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know, and uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. Mm. It's poetic, really. Uh. Oh, so you're a writer? In a sense. <clears throat> We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Oh my god, his garden is beautiful. Damon takes me around the back of his home where a variety of flowers flourish in a beautifully landscaped rose. A small stone path weaves through it and butterflies flit lazily through the air. Oh. My garden. It's beautiful. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. <coughs> oh, even more interesting is that one flower can mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Mm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off a of vine. Oh. Uh, Lilium bulbiferum? The orange lily. What do you think this one means? <laughs> Thou art the tightest. <laughs> oh. Pure hatred? Well. <laughs> And that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Honeysuckle snapdragon. I love sunflowers. They remind me of sunshine, and you can eat the seeds uh, as a delicious snack. What a practical choice. My stomach grumbles. Oh man, now I want sunflower seeds. I have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. He would put together a bouquet for me? Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I'll follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Sam, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. <laughs> Go for it. <clears throat> Damien smiles and walks back into the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. <laughs> oh hey, a gargoyle. Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Fix that gar <clears throat> oh no, oh no. How do I... Oh no, oh no, that's the top. That's the top. This goes... This goes here. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. He's gonna hate me. He's gonna hate me. I can't even understand how to... Oh no, oh no, we're in trouble. We are in so much trouble. Okay, 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 okay. We got this, we got this. Oh no, no, come on, come on, man. Oh my god, please! Oh 
Oh no 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 come on man See that's not gonna work oh god please Oh no 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 Out of time Uh I can't uh oh here comes Damien He looks upset I hope it's not about the dark my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter I must, I must attend to, so. What? Sam, did you break my gargoyle? All I did was lean on it. <sighs> I just had it installed last week. I know no matter. I suppose it will give me a chance to work on my masonry skills. Oh no! Oh no! Hmm. <clears throat> oh, if you'll excuse me, I'm afraid I must take my leave. It's no problem, dude. Everything alright? <sighs> Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. I, uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? Mm. He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to school post haste. Do you need help? Mm. Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Mm. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. Hmm. Damien and I walk into school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. Eh. Hey, Damien, you're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Well, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are In Trouble rodeo. Huh. What is it this oh. time? This, Damien, you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corners of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small broiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. <coughs> I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. We find another teacher in a broiler in a broiler room tucked away in the back of the basement uh, with him and Lucian and Ernest with him are Lucian and Ernest's sons Hugo. Hugo has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime, see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. What? The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second, Lucian. Did you try to cask of a Montelotto, Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. <laughs> I turned to Damien and whispered to him, What's, uh... The Cask of Amontillado. It's a classic Edgar Allan short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar with a promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, did you try to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling, cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. What? It took you 20 minutes, son? We just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Sweet Manchego. It's only five pages long, and there is no movie. Haha, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. I don't know. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was my teaching him a lesson. Hugo and Damien both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature. I did. I don't see a problem here. All right, I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucian, high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home, Mr. Bloodmarch. You too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school. Intense silence. Lucian, Damien, and I pile into my car and I begin to drive home. Lucian immediately pulls up his hood and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Hmm. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. 
but I care about you and I can see that you're struggling so if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings we can do that too uh-huh. you maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job hmm? I know how much you want your own car can't believe Damien's keeping his cool I'm impressed fine thanks for not freaking out too hard hmm. I love you son hmm. Lucian continues staring out the window love you too we spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, uh, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right, and all things considered, Lucian's brick lane was pretty good. Uh, so there's your several <laughs> your silver lining. There's that, yes. I really admired how you handled that. You were more diplomatic with him than I would have been. Just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. See you around soon. Oh. It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Mm-hmm. He is classy. Come home and find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo. What you watching? Yeah. Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Okay, I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watched them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I'm not pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular sized house? Mm. I. I don't know. How'd afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know that? He has... Has everyone read this story except for me? Lucian live-streamed the entire thing. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but he's really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Pet every dog. Every dog. Date complete. What is what is this point system? Have you considered taking part in the goth lifestyle? Uh rank A? I guess this was a good a good date. Uh Okay, well, <clears throat> I guess that was a dad date, um, <laughs> and I'm out of time, so thanks for coming with me on this journey, cosmonauts. Um, let me know in the next part who you want me to go on a date with next. I'm really not sure what I'm doing in this game or like how much time I actually get to like date around with these dads, but uh, we'll see. So. Um, yeah, thanks for coming along. See you in the next part. Bye.